Hey everybody, how's it going? I am your host Adrian coming to you almost live from lovely Petaluma, California here in Studio MC2 at Quicksurf Internet Studios. The Geekinator is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do feel free to head on over to techpodcast.com and check out all the other technology-related shows over there as well. I'd like to encourage everybody to visit us online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you have not already done so. Uh, you can also subscribe over at YouTube, Vimeo, Dailymotion, Blip.tv, uh, and uh, Stitcher Radio, and there's a few others online. I don't remember off the top of my head right now, but uh, there's a variety of places that you can find the show online and subscribe uh, to get it in your destination and format of choice. Let's go ahead and get into the uh, cool stuff for this episode. Uh, starting off Apple earlier today, the, uh, today is Tuesday, September 10th. I'm recording this uh, fairly late in the evening. Um, Apple has had their special uh, announcement day, their special event today, and uh, basically um, what it's boiled down to is they've released two new phones, uh, the iPhone 5S, which is basically the iPhone 5, which I have an iPhone 5 here, um, but much you know, up the in, the brains have basically been totally upgraded. It comes with a new finger, fingerprint sensor, which is cool for locking your phone. Because right now, uh, you know, anybody who uses security on their phone, and I highly recommend that you do, simply because of the sheer amount of stuff, personal information on your phone. Um, you know, you really should use a password or some some kind of security. Anyway, uh, so there's a new fingerprint sensor uh, integrated into the home button, which is kind of neat. Um, you know, all new uh, A7 processor, you know, new graphics, the whole nine yards. Awesome phone. Um, they've also announced the iPhone 5C. Now, the 5C is going to replace the standard iPhone 5. What Apple normally has done in, in the past has been uh, every time they release a new phone, the previous flagship phone becomes the $99 version, and the version before that becomes the 99 cent or the free version depending on what carrier you happen to be on well uh, apple isn't going to do that anymore with this release cycle it's now the iphone 5s the 5c and the 4s the 5c will be 99 dollars. the 5 it will start at 99 dollars. the 5 that was the 5c the 5s will start at 199 and then the 4s will be like on AT&T, you can typically get that for free or 99 cents or $9 or, you know, something of that nature. So pretty interesting. Um, be curious to see, uh, you know, what comes of, of, you know, the, the 5C. It's a, it's a plastic case, you know, comes in different colors, all that cool stuff. You know, I'm, I'm curious to see how well that's going to sell because typically it's the lower end iPhones that sell really well, gangbusters, and it's the you know th the top end ones that that don't sell as well. So, anyway, uh, also iOS seven now has a release date. It will be available uh, September eighteenth, if uh, memory serves correctly. Um, pretty cool. Definitely uh, looking forward to that. It's an all new operating system for iOS devices. Uh, the iPhone 4S, at least, uh, all the way up through the most current version, will be able to uh, make use of it. The iPad 2, all the way up, along with, you know, basically all, most of the at least a couple generations of iPad, iOS devices will be able to. Uh, uh, get iOS 7. Pretty neat. There's you know m way more than what I can cover here in the show. I've already been talking for a few minutes about this, just covering the highlights. Um, Apple has released a video. You can get it online uh, at Apple's website, or if you're an iTunes user, you can. Uh, there's an Apple uh, Apple Keynotes uh, podcast. You some you can subscribe to and pull it down. That's what I did. Watch the whole video. It's a little over an hour long, in depth. I highly recommend you go check it out. Uh, definitely 
if you're looking uh, to get a new iPhone, definitely uh, worth looking into. But that's not the only thing that's happened since the last time we've done a show. Oh, no, no. No, there's way more stuff online. Yes, over at Make Magazine, the Arduino Yun is now available. Now, we talked about this in a previous episode. Uh, pretty interesting. Um, it's the first Linux-based Arduino board, putting it in a unique position, at least for now, in the Arduino hardware lineup. It combines an AT Mega 32 U4-based classic Arduino, similar to the Leonardo, um, embedded directly on the same board as a Wi-Fi system on a chip running Lenino. It's a MIPS Linux distribution based around OpenWRT. So this is pretty cool. I am definitely uh, interested in picking up a Yun. You know, as anybody who has watched my show for any length of time knows that, you know, I'm kind of an Arduino fan and I, you know, I've got a little Uno here. I've got several uh, projects based on the Uno. I've got some Ethernet and, and you know, all kinds of cool stuff. Uh, so I'm, I'm, Looking forward to the Yun, particularly if it's going to have, you know, Wi-Fi system on a chip and some other cool stuff. I'm, you know, should be pretty neat. They're, they have a YouTube video here. It's just under five minutes long. I definitely, it's an intro video. I definitely recommend you go check it out if you're into Arduino. Pretty awesome stuff. You know, definitely worth looking into for sure. Also on the Arduino note, over at Hackaday, the Ardu guitar is an Arduino controllable guitar. That's right. Uh, electric guitars have several switches and potentiometers for controlling volume, tone, and which pickups are enabled, etc., cetera, et cetera. Well, rather than fiddling with these by hand, Bob built the Ardu guitar. It uses an Arduino to control the parameters over Bluetooth that allows this allows for musicians to configure presets, then recall them as needed providing the exact same sound every time. Pretty awesome. Definitely check it out. It's similar to the Guitar Duino, but it adds wireless control. So pretty neat. I thought it was awesome. Definitely uh, thought it was worth sharing with all of you guys. Uh, over at MakeZine.com again, uh, building the EverStorm. Mindstorm is a flagship robot. Now the, uh, the new Mindstorms is, uh, uh, has been announced and you can get it. Everstorm is the name of the Lego Mindstorm's ev 3 signature humanoid robot, as in the one that decorates the front of the rather pricey package. Yeah, $300, it's a little on the pricey side. Uh, it goes without saying, then, that Lego put a lot of work into the model. Still, just how cool a model is it? And if it were someone's first Mindstorm's model they tried to build, would it excite or intimidate them? So they've... Uh, Got a quick little, uh, you know, rundown of building it. I thought this was pretty cool, especially if you're into Legos, definitely, um, you know, check it out. You know, I, Lego has been a huge, uh, part of my life. I grew up, you know, my mom bought the little Lego sets for me back in the day when I was a little kid. And that was over 30 years ago. I'm not going to totally date myself here but that was a long time ago lego i've always been a huge fan of lego you know i mean as you can see here i've got a little helicopter here uh if you look up there yep right up there i've got uh, another little lego car um you know i have little ones running around the house they're huge fans of lego as well so uh definitely um you know lego is a huge part of this household so pretty neat uh, definitely check it out from the bbc news and their technology section raspberry pi aids cyber safety net for african rhino this is pretty neat i thought that i would share this the bare bones machines are controlling cameras to help form a cyber safety net watching remote areas of the savo national park the cameras will help rangers keep an eye on regions they do not usually patrol to spot rhinos or poachers so uh, these are basically Raspberry Pi computers. They're placing them out there with cameras. They've got some connectivity so that they can uh, get images off of these things. Uh, it, it's small. It's discreet, relatively low power, relatively easy to deploy, particularly into areas that they don't generally go into. You know, if you've got a lot of area to cover, uh, this is definitely, you know, can provide an assist. I thought this is pretty cool. Definitely check it out. 
Um, pretty neat. In the TV front, now I know a lot of you guys out there, a lot of you geeks out there, you know, you like to have one connection standard to connect your, you know, devices to your TV, and that's nowadays via HDMI. Well, a new HDMI standard has been officially announced. It's HDMI 2.0. It provides upwards of 18 gigabits per second bandwidth, which allows you to do 60 frames per second 4K TV. Now, when I say 4K, I don't mean 4K as in the film standard 4K, which is, you know, 4,000 pixels, over 4,000 pixels across. It's 4,096 pixels by whatever height for the aspect ratio. No, no, no. I mean 4K as an Ultra HD, which is a TV standard. It's four times the resolution of Full HD, which is 1920 by 1080. Ultra HD is 3820 by 2160. So it's basically the same 16, nine, 16 by 9 picture, but they've got four 1920 by 1080, you know, four times the resolution. So it's not quite the 4K that you would normally see a film mastered at, but that's okay because the vast majority of films nowadays are not mastered at 4K. They're mastered at 2K, which is 2048 across by whatever height the aspect ratio is. So anyway, uh, what's the use? Of, you know, you can also get 32 channel audio. Pretty neat. There's a slew of other updates that they add to this. Uh, ironically enough, you don't have to get a new cable. Um, if you've got a relatively recent cable, this works just fine. There's no change to the connector at all. So if you have a cable where all of the conductors that are defined by that connector are actually connected, uh, you can do this HDMI 2.0 with that cable. Now, if you've got a, a cheaper cable where they might not have necessarily connected all those conductors because the cable standard does have a set of conductors on there and they do have predefined things, you know, some of the cheaper cables in an effort to save money because copper is expensive, you know, they may only have the connectors in that cable connected for a particular standard and then they just don't provide the conductors for the rest of the connectors because it allows them to make a cheaper cable. I'm not advocating that you buy an expensive cable, but if you have a high quality cable where everything is connected uh, and to spec, then you can you don't have to replace your cable. All you have to basically do is you know upgrade devices that the cable connects to take advantage of the HDMI 2.0. So anyway, pretty neat. Um, you know, it's an evolution of the standards as they continue. I I try to keep up to date on a lot of that stuff and thought I would share it with you. For those of you who like to do a lot of circuit designing, um, over at techcrunch.com, Autodesk has released an electronics simulator called 123D Circuits. This is kind of cool. Hardware hacking often seems like black magic to the uninitiated, which is why the 123D circuits is so cool. It allows you to learn electronics using a virtual Arduino board and breadboard without blowing up capacitors or burning yourself with solder on your workstation. Well, I've blown up my fair share of capacitors. Uh, created by Autodesk, 123D circuits is part of the company's sandbox initiative that offers simple 3D simulators, 3D printing apps, and other tools for beginners and advanced users to take part in the maker movement. So pretty awesome. Um, you know, I have a fair amount of breadboard design stuff going on. Here's one of my ah, ah, more recent, uh, I don't know if I, there we go. Can I, there we go. One of my more recent projects, I'm doing some stuff. There we go. Um, with capacitive coupling, which is kind of neat. Um, if you look in the background, I don't know if you can see it right there. Right there. There we go. Uh, is another breadboard with some stuff that I've got going on that. So anyway, um, I might actually be checking this out because this is definitely something that I'm interested in. So pretty neat. That will do it for this edition of The Geekinator. As always, everything we've talked about is linked up in the show notes, which you can find online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you have not already done so. And with that, I will see all of you on the next episode. See you then. Bye.